this GI condition can make you go up two whole pant sizes in a day. It's one of the commonest but most underdiagnosed causes of burping and bloating. I'm Dr. Robin Chutkan, gastroenterologist, microbiome expert, and author, and I am here to help you find gut bliss. On today's show, years ago, when I was full-time faculty at Georgetown Hospital, I had a patient who was a pastor in one of the local churches in Washington, D.C., and he had a major GI problem. His problem was that he had severe burping. And I'm not just talking about an occasional burp here and there. I'm talking about off-the-charts pathological burping. He wanted to make sure that I really understood how much of a problem this was. So he left me a five-minute voicemail of himself burping. After listening to the voicemail, I immediately called my colleague, Dr. Susan Miller, who has a PhD in speech pathology and was an expert at diagnosing and treating the condition my patient was suffering from. Susan carefully evaluated the pastor. She analyzed his breathing, his speaking patterns, his eating, his drinking, and she discovered that an undiagnosed deviated septum was causing him to breathe almost exclusively through his mouth. Breath holding was also a contributing factor because during his sermons, he would speak loudly for long periods of time, but he wouldn't take a breath. And then at the end of a really long sentence, he would gasp for air. And much of that air that he was taking in was being swallowed. It wasn't all going down to his lungs. A lot of it was ending up in his stomach. So by the end of the sermon, he was looking and feeling like the Michelin man. My pastor's story has a good ending, though. He ended up having surgery to fix his deviated septum, and Susan helped him to retrain his speech and his breathing patterns, and the combination put an end to his burping and the bloating that the air swallowing was causing. Burping is a normal bodily function, but when it happens excessively, like with my patient, that is not normal. And when we come back, we're going to get into the causes and the treatment for air swallowing, a condition also known as aerophagia. Aero, meaning air, and phagia, meaning swallowing. And that's a condition my patient was suffering from. It is one of the commonest and also one of the most unrecognized and undiagnosed factors behind burping and bloating. The Gut Bliss Podcast is brought to you by VisBiome, my first and quite frankly, my only choice for a probiotic. Whether you're dealing with irritable bowel syndrome or just looking to restore your gut health, VisBiome can help. It's a medical food for the dietary management of IBS and gut inflammation. Backed by science and clinically vetted by thousands of my own patients. Find your gut bliss with VisBiome. Go to visbiome.com backslash gut bliss and use discount code gut bliss at checkout. Okay, let's start with the definition of air aphasia. This is a condition where people swallow large amounts of air unintentionally and without realizing it. That's different from what I'm about to do, which is I'm about to swallow a bunch of air intentionally and burp it up. Okay, here we go. Okay, that wasn't a good one. That was sort of a dainty burp. But the point is, I can swallow air, and if I had a glass of seltzer water, or a glass of champagne, I could do it even more. So if I am drinking something with bubbles, that is really going to enhance the likelihood that I will burp. But that's different from air aphasia, because with air aphasia, people are unintentionally swallowing air and they're swallowing large amounts. So as I mentioned, this is an incredibly common cause of bloating, and it's frequently misdiagnosed as something else. People are often given a diagnosis of acid reflux, of ulcers, of gallstones, of SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And I will frequently see patients who have been put on acid blockers or treated for ulcers that they don't have, or sometimes even had their gallbladder removed and they're still not better. And that's because the root cause of their problem, their air aphasia, has not been diagnosed. Most of us swallow a little bit of air when we eat or drink. 
And again, we may take in some extra gas bubbles with a carbonated beverage like seltzer or beer or soda or champagne. But people with air aphasia, again, swallow large amounts of air, and that can lead to a significant buildup of gas in their GI tract. What causes them to do that? If you have chronic sinus problems or a deviated septum or a history of allergies or asthma, you are at risk for air aphasia because those conditions all predispose you to mouth breathing, which predisposes you to air swallowing. What else can cause air aphasia? Chewing gum, sucking on hard candy, smoking, eating too quickly, talking while you're eating, drinking liquids with meals, and loose dentures. These can all cause air aphasia. So these are more sort of diet and lifestyle habits, right? Except for the dentures. Most people with aerophasia come in complaining of three things, bloating, burping, and abdominal discomfort. That's like the trio. If you have aerophasia, your stomach may feel tight like a drum and really distended because of the high pressure that's caused by all the air you've swallowed. And I've had patients in my office say they wish I could just stick them with a pin to deflate them. Eventually, most of that swallowed air gets burped up or it makes its way down through your GI tract down the other way, and it exits through your anus. But it can cause a lot of discomfort in between. Some people with air aphasia swallow small amounts of air, and they end up forcing up burps repetitively as part of an anxiety syndrome. It's a nervous habit, sort of like biting your fingernails or playing with your hair. And although it's a voluntary action, the person is usually unaware that he or she is doing it. One of the patients I saw a few years ago burped repetitively every 10 or 20 seconds during the visit, and she was coming to see me for this problem for repetitive burping. But when I was able to distract her, her burping stopped completely. And biofeedback using deep breathing techniques and guided visualization eventually improved her burping. She still ended up burping a lot when she was nervous, but she was much more aware of it, and she now had some tools to control it. After the break my go-to gutless solutions for air aphasia. If you are bloated and burping and having abdominal discomfort and you think you may have air aphasia, I want you to try these tips. I want you to spit out the gum. Just don't chew it at all. And keeping in mind that most gum has artificial sweeteners in it, that's also going to give you gas and bloating and potentially burping. So get rid of the gum. Don't suck on hard candy either, because that is also going to predispose you to air swallowing. So the mints are out also. I want you to eat slowly. Do not talk on the phone while you're eating. And I want you to save your liquids for the beginning or the end of the meal. I don't want you to be drinking gulps of liquid in between mouthfuls of food because that is going to be more likely to end up causing some air swallowing. I want you to choose flat, not bubbly drinks. So that means soda, champagne, beer, seltzer, all of that stuff. If you're suffering from air aphasia, I want you to avoid those beverages. I want you to think about meditating a little if you feel anxious, maybe just five or 10 deep breaths. And I want you to generally practice taking deep breaths that expand your lungs, not your stomach. So I don't want you to belly breathe if you have air aphasia. I want to leave you with three takeaways about air swallowing. Number one, if you are having that trio, that combination of bloating, burping, and abdominal discomfort, particularly if your belly ends up feeling really tight by the end of the day, you may have air aphasia. Number two, air aphasia is really common, but it's also really underdiagnosed because it often goes unrecognized by physicians. Number three, if you've had a GI evaluation for symptoms that include things like frequent burping and everything has been negative, I want you to ask for a referral to a speech pathologist who may be able to help figure out if the problem is related to your breathing, your speech, or your swallowing patterns. So that's it for this week's episode of the Gutless Podcast on aerophasia, otherwise known as air swallowing. Gutless. 
Go to gutbliss.com for my free seven-day microbiome reboot course. If you like what you're hearing, drop a review and hit that subscribe button. And remember, dirt, sweat, vegetables, the best prescription for a healthy gut. The information presented in this show is not meant to be medical advice. Consult your doctor before making any decisions about your health. The patients discussed are real people, but names and identifying features have been changed to protect their privacy.